Good day everyone! Today, work with me as seismologist and let us do the seismogram analysis. And for this activity, we will be needing a seismogram, a distance time graph, and a working table which details the P wave arrival time, the S wave arrival time, the time difference, distance from the epicenter, P wave travel time, S wave travel time, and the origin time of earthquake. When earthquake happens, seismic waves move away from the focus, and once it reaches the ground, it will get detected by the seismograph. The arrival of these seismic waves will be drawn by seismograph in smaller zigzag lines which denotes the arrival of P wave and the bigger zigzag lines denotes the arrival of S wave. Suppose that an earthquake happens and we receive this seismogram. Note that the first jump of the line marks the arrival of P wave. And so, by following the time scale below, P wave arrives at 103. Same thing to do with this. The second jump of the line marks the arrival of S wave. And so, by simply following the time scale below, S wave arrives at 110. Remember that seismic waves do not arrive on the Earth's surface at the same time. So there is a time difference on the arrival time of S wave and P wave. In determining their time difference, we're just going to do a very simple subtraction. So from our hypothetical seismogram, S wave arrive at 110. And remember that P wave arrive at 103, giving us a time difference of 7 minutes. This 7 minute time difference will be used in determining the distance of the epicenter of an earthquake from our seismological station where we recorded the seismogram. So now let us have our distance time graph. In the distance time graph, notice that this is a travel time in minutes. So we have here one, two. In between this interval, we have two lines, which means that from one, the second line is 20 seconds, second line is 40 seconds, and there goes 60, that's why it's two. Now, in the x-axis, we have the epicenter distance, which is in kilometer. So the first interval is 1 times 10 raised to 3, which means 1,000 kilometer, 2,000 kilometers, 3,000 kilometers, 4,000 kilometers, and so. So from 0 to 1, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 lines, which means that 1 line is equal to 200. So we can say that on this point, this is 1,200 kilometers. Second line is 1,400 kilometers. The third is 1,600 kilometers. The fourth is 1,800 kilometers. And therefore, this is 2,000 kilometers. Also on our distance time graph, we have two curved lines. One is for P wave, and this one is for S wave. Remember that these curved lines and the grids are very useful in tracking the location of the epicenter. By using distance time graph, we can determine how far is the origin of earthquake from our station. 
and in working with it, we will be needing a small piece of paper. So remember that we have our time difference, which is seven minutes. Now we're going to drag that piece of paper across the graph and make sure that its margin lines up with the grid. Mark the zero line on the small piece of paper like that. Now, here's the trick. The upper margin will serve as the marking for S and the zero line will be used for P. So here is how. Now let us drag that piece of paper across the graph in such a way that the margin touches the curve line for S wave and the zero mark touches the curve line for P wave. Make sure that you observe the horizontal and the vertical grids. Now, if both markings touches the curve lines by simply following the vertical line downward, it gives us now the distance of the earthquake's epicenter from our station. So this is it. So it's five, 5,000 kilometers, then exceeding one line, which is 200. So we have now 5,200 kilometers. So here is one important part of seismogram analysis. How is that 5,200 kilometer? becomes a useful information to us. Suppose that this that represents our seismological station from where we recorded the seismogram. From there, at about 5,200 kilometers, around it, around it lies the epicenter of the earthquake. So it can be on this point, on this point, this point, and this point, anywhere or at any point of this circle. Remember that from the focus of the earthquake, seismic waves took time to travel on reaching the Earth's surface. To know the travel time of P and S wave, let us go back to our distance time graph. From that 5,200 kilometer distance, we can trace the travel time of P, which is about 8 minutes, and same thing with S wave, which is about 15 minutes. So going back to our chart, so let us go back here to our chart. And let us write that 8 minutes for the P wave travel time. So how does this work? Suppose that you are the P wave. You walk for 8 minutes to reach the school at 1.03. Like this. So for 8 minutes of walking, you reach the school at 1.03. The question there is, what time did you leave home? So it's just like how P wave travel from the ground to the Earth's surface. This means that the earthquakes happens at around 1255 under the ground. Going back to the distance time graph for S wave arrival time, which is for about 15 minutes. So let us write that to our chart. S wave travel time is about 15 minutes. So how does it work? So you, from your home to your school, you travel for 15 minutes. If you reach the school at 1.10, what time did you leave your home? So it is about 
12.55, right? And that is the origin time of earthquake. So to give us a clearer view of what was concluded in this chart, let us take a look again at this figure. From the underground, the rocks break, sending us seismic waves, the P and the S wave, which is taking some time to reach the surface. And that is how a seismogram provides important details about an earthquake.